Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares. It was an unfortunate Christmas night for San Francisco. The 49ers fell to the number one AFC team, the Baltimore Ravens, by a score of 33-19. to There's not too much to panic from as the team still remains in control of their own destiny. However, Lindsay, how did the team react and how did head coach Kyle Shanahan respond to this loss? You know, Bree, I think it was an easy loss to explain, um, just given that the 49ers did lose the turnover battle, um, you know, five turnovers to nothing. Um, and it's really hard to beat any team when you have that many turnovers and to do it against, like you mentioned, at the time, the top AFC team and now the team in the league with the best record, the Ravens are now 12 and three. It just makes it incredibly tough. Um, you know, I think the bigger picture goal is still leading the 49ers, but they're going to regroup and they're looking to bounce back against the Washington Commanders in week 17. Um, you know, all of the team was very supportive of each other. And I think at the end of the day, you have down weeks in a season, you know, there it's a 17 game season happens over 18 weeks. And the 49ers certainly have strung a lot of wins together. Um, they've shown that they can, you know, lose a game and bounce back. We saw that during their three game slide in the middle of the season. So again, I don't think this is any time to hit the panic button, but it's time to regroup and just get ready for week 17. Definitely. Well, injuries played a big part in this game. Also, what did the post game injury report look like? Yeah. So we haven't gotten any further updates on this because head coach Kyle Shanahan actually had his conference call pretty early on Tuesday. Um, so all we do have is that post game injury report. So it's not uh, a short list. So I'll just rattle them off. Uh, left tackle Trent Williams suffered a groin injury. Um, and that was in the second half of the game. He did not reenter the game. Uh, backup left tackle Jalen Moore ended up suffering a concussion after filling in for Trent Williams. He also did not reenter the game. He's on the league's concussion protocol. Uh, cornerback Ambry Thomas suffered a hamstring injury also pretty late in the game. Brock Purdy ended up having a stinger. That's his second one in back-to-back weeks. And then Aaron Banks, from what it sounds like, that head coach Kyle Shanahan said he re-aggravated uh, the turf toe that caused him to miss the Jacksonville game earlier in the year. Um, so definitely some injuries to look out for, and we should get some updates on those five players later today. Um, when the 49ers kick off their first practice of the week. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Lindsay. And for Brock Purdy, those two stingers he suffered in back-to-back weeks, did Shanahan share if those hits will have any lingering effects on the quarterback? Yeah. So from what it sounds like, Brock Purdy seems to have made it out okay of both of those stingers. He suffered one against the Cardinals and then again against the Ravens. Um, We saw Sam Darnold take over for the last eight minutes of the Christmas night game. Um, from what head coach Kyle Shanahan said that it was possible that Brock Purdy could have re-entered the game if needed, but given the amount of injuries to the offensive line and then also where the game was at that point, the 49ers had a pretty significant deficit, even though they were able to get um, that last touchdown after Sam Darnold entered the game. Um, It just was at a place where they opted to keep Sam Darnold out there, keep Brock Purdy out, make sure that he's okay for this upcoming matchup with the commanders and what head coach Kyle Shanahan said is that he's expected to be fine for this next week. So it appears as if no lingering effects. Again, we'll get more updates on everyone hopefully later this afternoon. All right. Well, despite the loss, the Niners still remain at the top of NFC standings with an 11 and four record. Two teams match San Francisco's record, the Detroit Lions and the Philadelphia Eagles. So, Lindsay, can you explain how the conference standings shake out and what the team's outlook is like for the rest of the regular season? Yes, it is stacked at the top of the NFC standings. Um, so the Detroit Lions and the Philadelphia Eagles have matching 11-4 and four records. The 49ers did create some breathing room for themselves. Um that the margin for error is much less at this point, but they do have a better conference record 
than the Detroit Lions, so that keeps him in the number one seed. And then they own the head-to-head tiebreaker over the Philadelphia Eagles um, because of that big win in Week 13. So they remain in that number one seed. Like you said earlier in the podcast, the 49ers are in control of their playoff destiny at this point to ensure that they remain where they want to be, that number one seed that comes with the first round bye. Um, and then home field advantage, they do need to run the table, win out the season. Two more games left on the slate. That begins with the Washington Commanders. And then they close things out against the Los Angeles Rams. So it's going to be two really very important weeks of football for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, these next two weeks are crucial for wanting to stay at the top of the conference. But the same story goes for NFL power rankings. Also, the team took just a slight dip in the eyes of national outlets, but still remain a top team. So Lindsay, can you explain how the experts are grading the 49ers? Yeah, so from a lot of the national outlets that I saw, the 49ers are very much still top contenders. Um, You know, obviously the dip is not super surprising given, given the way that the Christmas Day matchup went, but NFL Network, USA Today, um, Fox Sports, Bleacher Report, all have the 49ers coming in as number two. Obviously, the loss to the Ravens on Christmas night is something that left some question marks for people. But, you know, it seems like from what we've seen from all the outlets that it's kind of like, how do you bounce back after this? And that's certainly what's on the minds of this team. They certainly think they have the roster and the talent to do that. And they've proven that over the course of of the 2023 season. So now it's just about getting back up, shaking shaking it off and uh, you know, keep playing in these final 2 weeks and making sure that they can, you know, end up where they want to be heading into the postseason. Yeah, it's a quick pace in the NFL, especially at this time of year, and the team will have to digest this game, then look forward to the upcoming week because they'll be going on the road to face the Washington Commanders. So what do the next couple days look like for the team? Yeah, so the 49ers essentially started week 17 already a day shorter than what they normally would because of playing on Monday night football, Christmas night. Um, So their schedule does reflect that Tuesday normally is a player's day off, but it's kind of everything mashed into one. And then head coach Kyle Shanahan also noted in his presser on Tuesday that he did want to give the team enough time to recover from the late game on Monday and then the short turnaround that is coming at the end of the week. Um, So they are having a little bit of a later start on Wednesday. Um, And so they'll have practice Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Friday also going to be kind of a hectic day because the 49ers are heading to the East Coast. Um, They'll be playing the Washington Commanders, as we've said, in week 17. Um, So it's all going to happen very, very quickly. And I kind of feel like these last two weeks of the season are just flying by and there's so much at stake. So it's an exciting time, certainly. But um, yeah, really no time to, you know, super digest this game because you've got to get ready, turn it all around for the next one. What did Fred Warner say after the game? Just going back to work. But that will do it for today's episode. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow First in 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in. 